Hi folks, HR Funk here with my M1 battle rifle and it's that time of the year again where I'm going to completely disassemble my M1, clean it, and perform routine maintenance. Now I really only do this type of maintenance on the rifle once every year because constantly taking it out of its stock and putting it back in can start to loosen the action inside the stock and eventually start to degrade accuracy. Normally, during the course of the match season, I can clean my M1 just by cleaning the bore and the gas system without a complete disassembly. But it's the dead of the winter, so this is the best time for me to do my big maintenance job on the M1, and I thought I'd bring all of you along so you can see exactly how I maintain my rifle. I'm going to start things off by cleaning the bore of my M1, and I think this is easier done with the rifle still assembled. So I'm going to check it just to make sure that there's no ammunition left in the chamber. And now I'm going to position it in my gun vise. When it comes to cleaning the bore of your M1, there's a few things that will make your life a little bit easier. As always, you want proper size cleaning brushes and patch jags. Also, an M1 muzzle guard is a nice thing to have. This makes sure that your cleaning rod stays aligned in the bore and doesn't rub against the crown of your barrel. And this little device. This is called an M1 Buddy. And I will get a close-up view of this so you can see it easier. But you can get these from a lot of online retailers, Midway, Brownells. You can also get it directly from M1Buddy.com. And what this does, when you open the bolt of your M1, you can position this down in the chamber and then the tension of the spring inside the M1 will hold this in place and you don't have to worry about bumping the bolt with your cleaning rod and having the action slam shut. So this is good for safety and it just again makes your life a little bit easier. So next I'm going to take my 30 caliber patch jag and attach it to my cleaning rod. Then I'm going to take my M1 muzzle protector and put that right over the rod just like this. When it comes to cleaning a rifle barrel everyone seems to have their own way of going about it. I'll show you the way I like to do it. What I like to do is start out by getting the bore well saturated with solvent and this patch is just saturated with nothing other than Hoppies number nine and I'm going to get the patch started into the muzzle. Then as soon as I get it inserted, I'm going to move the bore guide into place. Now you notice that I had to turn this a little bit to get it aligned properly. This does have a proper orientation for the muzzle guide to work with your cleaning rod. Now I'm just going to run that patch through the bore. I'm going to do that three more times with three more saturated patches and then I'll move on to the next step. And I now have three saturated patches through the bore of the rifle. And the inside of the bore is well coated with that cleaning solvent. Now I'm just going to let it sit and let that solvent work for about five minutes or so before I start to brush the inside of the bore. Okay, I've given about five minutes for that solvent to work in the bore. Now I'm going to start to use the bore brush to clean out the bore and clean all of the leftover powder fouling and bullet jacket material and things like that from inside of the bore. And the way I like to do this, again, is a little bit different from the way most people do it. I don't like to run the brush from the muzzle to the breech. Reason being, I don't want to push all of that foreign material that I'm taking back from inside the bore into the chamber area of the rifle. So what I'll do is insert my cleaning rod into the bore and run it all the way through and position my bore guide. Now I will install the bore brush on the rod just like this. And what I'm going to do is pull the brush from the breech through the bore and out the muzzle. Just like that. And by the way, don't try to pull your bore brush through the bore guide. It's not going to fit. So what I do at this point is just simply remove the brush and reinsert the cleaning rod into the muzzle. Run it all the way back up 
to the action. And then I'll repeat this process with the brush about 10 times. I'll pull it through approximately 10 times. Then I'll stop and run another saturated patch through the bore and see what that looks like. Normally the first one that I run through after the cleaning brush comes out very dirty. And I will just continue this process, repeating the steps, running the saturated patches, pulling the brush through, and then another saturated patch, until the saturated patches start to come out looking pretty clean. Then I start to dry patch the bore until the patches come out clean and dry. And I've just finished my first 10 passes with the bore brush. So now I'm going to run another saturated patch through the bore. And unless I miss my guess, it's not going to come out looking very good. And it did not. So I'm just going to continue this cycle, as I mentioned a moment ago, until these saturated patches start to come out looking pretty clean. Then I'll switch over to the dry patches. So after three cycles of the saturated patches, bore brush, and more saturated patches, you can see that the saturated patches are coming out looking pretty good. So now I'm going to dry patch the bore, just dry everything out, and finish this part of the cleaning process. And I think that's going to be my final dry patch through the bore. And I think I'm ready to declare this rifle bore pretty clean. The next thing I'm going to do is clean the chamber of my M1. And this is another one of these things that is made infinitely easier by having the right tool. In this case, I have an M1 chamber brush. And I'm just going to work this back and forth in here a few times. And now I'm going to use a cleaning patch on the end of my chamber brush just to finish cleaning that chamber out. And I'll probably get through a few patches, just like the bore, until they start to come out nice and clean. And at this point, our chamber is looking pretty good. I might run one or two more patches down through there just to finish the job. But overall, our rifle bore and chamber are now in pretty good shape. And I'm now going to run one final patch through the rifle's bore. And this one is saturated with a good rust preventative. I'm using Barricade for anyone who's interested. And I'm going to work this back and forth a little bit just to make sure it gets distributed well inside the rifle's bore. And that's going to finish the rifle's bore and chamber cleaning portion of this video. For the next part of this process, I'm going to start the disassembly of the M1. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove my M1 buddy. By the way, these things also work in the M14 for any of you who might have one of those rifles. Turn the rifle over. And now I'm going to remove the action. And sometimes tools are used for this. I can usually do it without a tool on this rifle. But I'm just going to pull back on the rear portion of the trigger guard and up. And that's going to release the action. And now I'm going to just simply pull that right out of the stock. Now the trigger group can be completely disassembled, and I think I did that once in a maintenance class, but it's not something I feel confident doing, and it's not something I'm going to do with this rifle. It's easier to just spray it off with something like brake cleaner and then lube it properly than for me to try to take it all apart and then hope that I get it back together right. So for this part, I'm just going to clean this off, 
I'm actually going to scrub it with a brush and some hoppies, but I'm not going to do a whole lot in, the, in terms of disassembly of the trigger group. When it comes to lubricating the trigger group, I am simply going to put a drop of oil down here on the hammer pin, and I'm also going to put a drop of oil on each one of these lugs and that's all the more lubrication I'm going to put on there. You don't want anything down here on the sear or on the trigger itself. Moving on with our disassembly, I'm going to raise the rifle up like this and I'm going to support the hand guards here and I'm going to just take the palm of my hand and strike the buttstock a few times and that's going to release this portion of the stock and I'm not going to be doing anything with this other than setting it off to the side. Now this is the point in the process where if you're not familiar with disassembly and reassembly of the M1 you should probably take your phone and snap a few pictures to see exactly how all these parts are oriented. What I'm going to do in just a minute is start to disassemble all of these parts and I'll identify them as I go so you know what exactly it is you're looking at and again when you put it all back together it all needs to be oriented exactly as it is right here. The first thing that I'm going to remove is the operating rod spring which you can see the rear portion of right here and it is connected to the follower arm by the follower rod and all I'm going to do to remove that is pull back on it and it should release from the follower arm and it is, it is under tension so you have to control it as it comes out of here and that is a long spring and I'm going to set that off to the side for now next I'm going to remove this pin and this pin comes out very easily and once I remove the pin, everything else more or less self-destructs. Now one thing about this pin, it does have an enlarged end and an end that's not enlarged and it only goes into this hole one way. And you can look at the hole and you can actually tell which way it goes in, but for our purpose here, the enlarged end has to be on the opposite side that you're looking at here. So it comes out on this side and only goes back in on this side. Now our other parts, I'll start to remove. This is the follower arm and this is the bullet guide. This is our follower or follower assembly. And this is the operating rod catch. Now in case you don't know, this is the clip latch right here. And this can also be removed, but this is one of these things that if it ain't broke, I don't fix it. And my clips are staying secure just like they should when I'm shooting, so I am not going to remove this as part of my routine maintenance. If you are having problems with your clip ejecting early, most of the time, that is a weak clip latch spring and that would be a time you are going to disassemble this part and replace that spring and it should cure that problem. What I am going to do instead of removing my clip latch is turn this over and I'm now going to separate the bolt from the operating rod. And the way this is done as I'm retracting the operating rod I'm going to be putting upward pressure on it and it will reach a point near the back of the receiver where the operating rod will separate from the bolt and I'm just going to work that the rest of the way out of there and there is our operating rod the bolt will now come out fairly easy now there is a tab or actually it's the rear of the firing pin that fits through a recess in the receiver, so it has to be in the proper orientation to come out of there. If you pull it forward and it catches, don't start to yank on it. Just 
turn it slightly one way or the other and it's going to come right out. Now the bolt can be completely disassembled also and it comes down into several different components but again this is another one of those parts that if I'm not having problems with it I do not disassemble it for routine maintenance so this is as far as I'm going to take that down. And the last thing I'm going to do is disassemble the gas system at the front of the rifle and I'll reposition the camera before I do that. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is remove my gas plug which is right here and it's shaped like a large Phillips head screw. Fortunately I don't need a large Phillips head screwdriver. I can do this with my tool that's connected to the chamber brush. I think I got this from Fulton Armor if I remember correctly and there might be other places you can find them as well. But I'm just going to use this to unscrew that gas plug. Oops, tried to get away from me, but there we go. Next, I'm going to remove this clamp. Just like so. And normally I would go ahead and remove the gas tube, but the gas tube for my rifle has splines that have been peened, so I have to drive the gas tube on with a mallet and then drive it off with a mallet. And every time I do that, it gets a little looser and a little looser. And since I can clean this without removing it from the barrel, I just clean it this way. All I really need is a 45 caliber bore brush that I can brush this out and then use patches to clean it out inside. One thing about the gas tube is this needs to stay dry inside. You don't want any kind of lubricant or any other kind of moisture in there. So make sure if you use something like hoppies to clean this out or something else that you dry it all completely out before you reassemble the rifle. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm just going to clean this gas tube with a 45 caliber bore brush. Get it nice and clean. and run a cleaning patch through there. That's a little loose, so I think I'm going to double up and use two patches. And there we go, our gas tube is clean. Now I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but I have a lot of carbon buildup here on these threads that the clamp attaches to. So I'm just going to clean that all off of there with some hoppies and a brush and get that all nice and clean. And I will also clean the threads inside of here just so that secures down nice and tight and I don't have any issues with that gas tube starting to move around. And I'll just clean that all off of there with a trusty M16 brush. And the hoppies made pretty quick work of all of that carbon buildup. 
I don't see any of it left on the threads on the barrel. And likewise, the threads on my barrel clamp are now nice and clean. So as I clean the parts, I'm going to start to reassemble them on the rifle. And this can go back on. There we go. The gas plug doesn't require much, but I'll go ahead and just clean those threads as well. And we do need to check the gas plug when we put it back inside the rifle, and I'll show you how in just a minute. Actually, I can demonstrate this better outside the rifle. We just need to make sure that the gas plug is moving freely, and I'm just going to take my screwdriver tool and push on the inside of that Phillips head opening and make sure the gas plug opens and closes freely. Now I'm going to go ahead and screw it back into the gas tube. And you need to make sure when you put this back in, you get it good and tight. So I'm actually going to secure the receiver in my vise here, or my lock, and then give this a good torquing to make sure that's in there good and tight. You don't want that to come loose when you're shooting because that can affect your accuracy. And also, more than once, if they get real loose, these have gone down range when someone's fired a shot. All right, I've got the receiver locked in the vise now, and I am just going to <clears throat> tighten that down about as tight as I can get it, just to make sure it doesn't come loose. Next, I'm going to clean my operating rod, and there's a lot of firing residue on the operating rod. I'm just going to scrub all that off with that M16 brush. Also, the stainless steel tip on the operating rod needs to be cleaned, so I'm going to clean that off as well. And since this fits directly into that gas tube, I'm going to make sure that's nice and dry before I reinsert it into the gas tube as I start to reassemble the rifle. And there is our nice, clean operating rod. Your operating rod is always happy when it's nice and clean. Keep that in mind, guys. And I'm now just going to start to insert this back into the gas tube. And by the way, I know you couldn't tell really when I disassembled this, but this is moving much more freely now that I've got that gas tube clean and that I've also cleaned off the operating rod. So I'm just going to leave that there for the moment and we'll clean the bolt. The main thing I'm going to concentrate on when I'm cleaning the bolt is the bolt face. I'm going to get that nice and clean, make sure that there's nothing left in there. And I'm also going to clean all the old grease off the bolt locking lugs. And we'll replace that with new grease here in just a little bit. And there is our nice clean bolt. Now, as I start to reassemble the bolt and the operating rod, I'm also going to start to lubricate some of these surfaces, both the underside of the barrel, inside of the receiver, and also in the grooves for the bolt lugs on the other side of the receiver. In order to do that, I'm going to be using a small paintbrush, and the reason I do this is because I only want grease in certain areas. I don't want grease all over the place, potentially collecting foreign material and maybe starting to become almost like a fine grit paste or something like that. I want just a little bit of grease in certain areas. And I'm going to start out with this area right underneath the barrel. And this is the area where the operating rod works back and forth along this underside. So we just want a little bit of grease right there. That should be fine. It's going to be hard for you to see as I do it, but I'm also going to put some grease 
inside of the receiver right in this area where the bolt bears against it as it moves back and forth during firing. So again I'll get my little tube of grease and get some on there and put it right in that area where the bolt moves just like that. And I'm also going to put some grease right in here where the bolt rides inside the receiver. A little bit of that cutout right there. And a little bit on the bolt lugs themselves. Just so we get nice smooth operation once the rifle is all back together. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the bolt in the receiver. And as I said before, we need to make sure that the tail of our firing pin goes through that recess where it's supposed to. And once it does, just like that, the bolt will pretty much fall right into place. I'm going to go ahead, as soon as I find where I put my paintbrush, and put a little bit of grease right along here where that bolt lug rides. And also just a little bit down here in the groove that the operating rod rides in. Now it's time to reconnect the bolt and the operating rod. And I'm just going to bring this back here. And just like that, they're back together. Now, a quick function test at this point. The bolt and the operating rod should move freely enough that just by tipping the barrel up and down, and I hope you can see that, I'll move back here in case that's off camera, should move freely just like that, and you know that everything is back together properly. And before I start to reassemble our action parts, I'm going to take a minute and just clean out these grooves in the receiver here. Make sure we don't have any foreign material down in there that's going to cause some issues with our follower not wanting to move or something like that. And I'll also take a couple minutes to scrub off each of these parts themselves. Alright, the first part that I like to put back in is the operating rod catch. And when you do this, you need to make sure that this little arm hooks underneath the clip latch. And there's a little projection inside of this part of the receiver that it hooks right onto. If you don't have it on there, if it's sitting flat down against the barrel like that, it's not attached. So it needs to be underneath there just like that. Next part that I'll put on is the bullet guide and you can see there are little tabs that fit back into these grooves right here and as soon as I find it I'll reinstall my magazine follower you'll notice on the follower arms there are these little projections that actually fit into the bottom of the follower just like that and it more or less falls into place right there now remember our pin only goes in one way and you might need to wiggle and jiggle these parts a little bit just to get it to go through there and there we go that pin should go in very easily. If it doesn't want to go in very easily, there's something that's not assembled quite right. Now it's time to reinstall our operating rod spring. And again, that Follower rod 
has that fork that attaches to these little projections on the follower arm. And our rifle's action is completely reassembled. The last step is to reattach the stock. And let me make sure the camera has a full view of what I'm doing. And I'm just going to put the stock in place just like that. And it goes together very easily. And the last thing we have to do is reattach our trigger group. And you can see that there are grooves in the receiver that line up with the surfaces on the trigger group so that you know that you're putting it in the right place. And you can pretty much tell by feel when you have it right, it goes right in there. And when you close the trigger guard, you should feel that squeezing the stock and the action back together, just like that. And our rifle is completely reassembled. The last thing I have to do is just a few function tests to make sure the rifle is reassembled properly and everything is working as it should. So the first thing I'll check is the safety. With the safety on, the hammer should not fall and it doesn't. With the safety off, the hammer does fall and I'm holding the trigger back and I'm just going to reset the action to make sure the trigger resets, and it did. The bolt locks open as it should when there's no clip or ammunition inside. And the last thing I'm going to do is load a clip of dummy ammunition into the rifle, just like that. And I'm going to cycle these cartridges through just to make sure everything internally is working properly. And everything is absolutely working properly with our M1. And that's going to do it for my M1 cleaning and maintenance video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, make sure you forward those to me. Remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you purchase from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.